Hi everyone, Anshita this side. Welcome back to EV Automation Hub. In today's video, we are going to see how we can perform different actions on the web page using K6. Actions like we will see how we can perform click action or how we can pass some input in the text box and how we can select the checkbox. So to handle this one, I have a sample demo website, which is open card website. And there is a registration form in which we can see there are multiple fields where we can enter our text. And we also have a checkbox where we can perform the selection of checkbox and clicking on the button. So let's do one thing. Let's just copy the URL from here. Now let's go to our editor and start writing the code. So I've already created a basic template in which I have imported the browser and passed the options over here in which we have passed browser type as Chromium and we have passed executor as shared iteration. So it means the scenario will be executed using a shared set of iterations, which is the default one. And then comes our default function where we already have provided browser.new page, which will open your browser. And then we need to provide the URL. So I paste the URL, which I just copied. Now the next step is we need to enter the text on the page. For that, first of all, we need to find the locator. And in case six, what you have to do, you have to use the page method, which is page.locator. Fine. So let's go to the website and find the locator. So this is the first name text box. Let's do a right click and inspect the element. So it has ID as a locator, which is input first name. So I'll just quickly copy from here and let's go to our code. For ID, we know how to pass ID. We need to pass it like this with the hash. So now we have found the locator. The next step is we need to pass some text. So for that, we need to use dot type. And inside the type, you can pass your text. For example, I will pass it as K6. Now let's find the locator for other text box as well. So let's quickly find the locator for last name. So this is also again ID, which is input last name. I'll just copy from here and I will again write page dot locator. And inside this, I will pass my ID value, which is input last name. And then using dot type, I will pass the text over there. So let's pass it as demo. So we have multiple fields on the page. So we have email, telephone, and two passwords. We have four more text box. What I will do, I will just quickly copy this line because we are going to use it for four more text boxes. And I'm going to change the locator over here. Now let's find the locator for other text boxes as well. So let's quickly find the locator for email. So this is input email. I'll just copy it quickly. Then we have telephone. Fine, I'm going to copy this as well. You need to have a knowledge of finding locators on the page, whether it's CSS or expand, you need to have that knowledge. I've already covered this in one of the previous videos for Cypress, where I've already explained how to find CSS on the page. So I will provide the link in the description below and you can check out if you do not know how to find CSS, you can watch that video. Now let's quickly find locator for password. And then the last one is confirm password. Which is input confirm. So now I've passed all my locators for the text boxes. So I've already passed the text for first name and last name. Let's change the text for email. So let's pass it as ab.testingk6. So I'm just passing a dummy email over here for the testing purpose. And in the telephone, I'm just putting the value in the telephone field as well. Now comes the password. So let me set it as test123 double exclamation. And same password in the confirm password as well. Okay. So now we have passed the values in all the text boxes. So the next step is selecting this text box. So let's find the locator for this. So this is type checkbox. Let's go over here. So in case six, there is a method to select the checkbox, which is page dot check. So inside the check, you need to pass your locator. So what it will do, it will actually select your checkbox for this locator. Now comes the last click action, which is this continue button. So let's find the locator for this as well. So this is type submit. So now let's go back and let's write over here page dot locator, paste the copied locator. So I'm going to pass it in a constant variable. Why we are doing this? After clicking on the submit, it will take you to the next page. So what we will do, we will use await promise dot all and inside that we will use page dot wait for navigation along with the submit dot click. So I'll explain what it is doing. So what it will do because after clicking on submit button, it will take you to the new page and there will be some navigation. 
so we are using promise dot all to wait for two promises to be resolved before continue first is like submitting on the click button and then the next one is navigating to a new page so since clicking the submit button will cause a page navigation that's why we are also using page dot navigation over here which is needed now what we will do we will also perform some test validation over here for that we will use check so let's import check first so you need to import it like this import check from k6 and then over here we will write our assertion using check so inside check we are going to pass page because we are going to perform test assertion on that web page and now over here what we will do let's pass some message over here so let's do text validation so what we are going to do after login we can verify if our account is created or not so how we can verify so i have already registered for one of the test account and after registering we get this page so on this page what you can do you can verify if text is present or not we can find the locator for this one so this comes inside your h1 so over here so we are going to mention it like this so page dot locator your h1 is actually equivalent to that text so how we can make sure for that we are going to use the method which is text content what it will do it will return me the text which is at h1 location and now what is our expected text so our expected text over here is your account has been created so let me explain you once more what i have done i am just performing test validation on the page this is my text message and now we are finding the text for this h1 locator and then we are saying it should be equivalent to your text has been created so this is the expected behavior whenever you perform any testing on the web application you know the expected behavior for this one this is the expected behavior we should get this message on the page as soon as we registered on the website so this is my test case in which i am performing different actions for entering text for selecting the checkbox and for clicking on the submit button now let's go to terminal and let's run this test case so let me expand it so run this command which is k6 browser headless false k6 run your script name which is register form.js now let's see so you see on the page it is actually entering all your text and clicking on the submit button so in the logs we can see the text validation this is actually passed over here and if we see the browser http request failure which is 0% and it actually executed for one virtual users and one iteration because we didn't pass any specific virtual users over here we just passed the executor as shared iterations so let's do one more thing let's perform one more validation if i pass over here let's say 1 2 3 and let me change the email id and if i run my test case we will see if this assertion is working fine or not let's do some negative testing as well let me clear it so what i am doing i have registered on the page but this time i am expecting a different message which should actually fail my test case why because on the page we never see this message we just see your account has been created so let's rerun the test case and let's see so you see this it is entering the text clicking on the continue button and over here you see text validation it actually got failed why it got failed because our text is different on the web page as compared to what we have passed in the test case so this way you can actually make sure your test validation is working fine or not let me reboot the changes again so yes using k6 you can also perform your functional testing so you would just want to open your browser or perform some actions on the web page you can do all this stuff easily using k6 so explore more about it do some couple of actions so in a single tool you can perform all this actions you can do load testing you can also do functional testing you can do your api testing also so yeah that's it for the video i hope you like the content please like share and subscribe to my channel and thank you for watching